really it was just sat there waiting and and I think that's what happened with a lot of people it's like most we're all so busy and we're all caught up in like just you know day-to-day -day life working you know family whatever else it is that when everything stops it's like I think that shit that's just kind of like bubbling beneath the surface is like it just came out straight away so I don't think I'm alone in like in that sense of like kind of like shit that I haven't dealt with like rearing its heads you know what I mean yeah it's like at least we had some time to maybe like figure some shit out before it got busy again because who knows maybe it would have been more destructive if it's just like you're constantly working and you don't take that break yeah yeah figuring out how to like like for me it was like figuring out how to just be someone that's not in a band and not an, you know not an artist and have more of an identity than just just like making music and going on tour and stuff like that because i think I'd attached so much of who I was to that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, hey, oh, I can relate to that for sure, man. You start get you start getting older. Like I don't know if I can think every single show for like yeah, yeah, bro. <laughs> well, we all love. I mean, we all love our jobs, right? Like, so it's so easy to be like, yeah, but I love this. So like, I don't want to stop doing this. Like, you know, most we're, if we're addicted to our work and our jobs and shit, and it's like. You don't think that's such a bad thing, but you don't realize how much other stuff you're kind of neglecting, like your family or your friends or just like what, you know, what you're going to do when you retire. Like you can't just work forever. Do you know what I mean? You got to have something else that you love. And I think it like it was important for me anyway to find that like in lockdown. It's like, right. Who are you when you're not like doing your job? Yeah. Who are you? Right. Yeah. I'm not what I do. I, 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 I think defining I, I always like for 20 years, you know, and probably same for you, Ollie. Like, you're on the road, you got this cycle. I mean, shit, there's this band called Sticks. They still tour every three months. They do three <laughs> on and three off. Um, I, think that, I think that's so corrosive to identity. And, yeah. And I, COVID for me made me go, oh, right, family first. Like, that's fucking in front of everything for me now. Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, right. Like, the music and. I know you have like a really, you you have a co totally different kind of thing with your band where like you guys are so, I think aren't you guys you guys are really like connected to your fans right like there's like a yeah, really yeah, dedication sure. and like you have a you have like almost uh, you an expectation you put on yourself to be able to 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 honor that as well with 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 the, my, with our band we were just songs and like we 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 were. I, we never really grabbed much of a of a fan base for the band. It was more like you know we <coughs> we we were in the major label system. They put us on the radio. We were in t shirts and jeans, and we just kind of went out and did our thing. And we didn't we we tried to like have that hands on embrace of the fans, but it became it was such a weird it's such a weird thing to balance where you're like like the bands I grew up listening to, like the bands I loved, like. The Velvet Rope was was cauterized in front of their their fans, and they could only get so close. But with this shit, yeah. this shit, like yeah, the fact weird. that they can reach out and touch us right now, I gotta be honest, it freaks the shit out of me. And I, I honestly, if I was gonna, if I were to jump on a side, I would probably jump on the side of I don't like it. And so, I when when COVID hit, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> I never, not having that sort of, you know, our band hasn't really put out a record in a decade, really, like a real record. And so, like, for me, it was like, what, it, who are you without this, without music, without music being this sort of, like, crutch of being like, this is who I am. You know, I play, we were playing, like, 20, 30 shows a year, just every year for my entire adult life, at least that many, like, when, when we were off cycle the last decade. And then that went away, and I was like, oh, shit, like, I gotta go start a garden. I guess I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna sort. I guess I'm gonna grow some tomatoes and shit, and nerd it out on tomatoes. <laughs> it's it's really it's really nice simplifying life. I guess in in retrospect, it's like I'm really I'm grateful for my COVID experience because it really helped me like understand that if I were to be doing this again. That, that it would be with with a thoughtful approach of like, it's because I want to do it and not because I have some expectation of people waiting for me to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I fucking hate that. I hate that expectation. Where's that next record? I don't know. Like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care right now. I, I care about what I'm trying to do. Like, yeah, and, and, if that, that. and if that's, 
You know what I mean? If that's connected to the band, cool. If it's not, if you're okay with that, great. If you're not okay with that, I don't give a fuck either because I'm yeah, not yeah, here yeah. to live up to your expectations the same way you're not here to live up to mine. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, saying. I get that fully. Like, yeah. We released one song this year. I mean, apart from these collabs stuff, but our band released one song this year. And we were meant to have like a second DP out by now. And that's just the realization I've had over this last year is like, just stop worrying about like, everything like not like like attaching worth to like how many listeners you've got or how many records you're selling or how many you know what i mean like it's so easy to get wrapped up in this world that we're in right now and being like how many people are watching how many people are doing this like, <laughs> like right. you start to believe that the world is instagram and tiktok and like you and then you pull yourself away from it and go i'm not gonna go on my phone for a week or two and you forget how much like it's not the world do you know what i mean it's not our reality the reality is so different and like Right. Like, like you just like, you know, saying like growing vegetables in a garden and stuff. It's like you like you're like toxic and like whatever mind looks at that. Like that's not no. How could that ever be as important as making music or going on tour or whatever and stuff? And it's just like. But it, it can be. It absolutely yeah, why, can, why? It can actually like, be more important. Like why are you attaching worth to like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, everything's pointless. Everything, nothing fucking matters. So like why how have you wrote like built up in your head that like doing that is so much more important than and doing this like doing these other things you know what i mean it's like for sure i i i, I am reteaching that's why i've been reteaching myself like when i went away last year like i went to brazil because that's where my wife's from we actually just stayed on like we went straight to like this like um ashram and it was like full of harry christmas nice. yeah and just literally like i mean i didn't know what the fuck was going on just went there and was like i'm just gonna live like these people because they all look really happy right and like you know like almost like peel away like this kind of like world that i've been like trapped in for so long and it's just like obviously i always knew i had to come back to it and do all this stuff and like, it's like i mean i'm having a good time now talking to you guys and meeting you you know for the first time and stuff but at the same time it's like making sure you're like on the outside of it just looking in sometimes and not like really True. far down stuck in it and being like this is everything. This is everything that matters. Yeah, man. Yeah. And especially starting so young, you know, like what you did too, right? Like you, it becomes, you know, you leave high school and the next thing is you're on the road. That's everything. That's ever like you just left everything and now this is everything. And it becomes your identity. And these are your brothers. You call them as much. And Thank at you. the end of the day, it's like, they're not your fucking brothers. This <laughs> isn't everything. Yeah. You are four people with four completely different universes and lives. And for you to sort of like just say, this is my life. This is all it is, man. But oh, man, what a terrible uh, tunnel vision it created for my young self that when I got off the road in 09, I'd done, I'd done nothing but like this regiment up until then. And I like am in my house for the first time. And I'm, a, I'm surrounded by a bunch of people that I met like in five minutes in L.A. And they're in my house, <laughs> puking on my fucking couch, <laughs> like – like pouring drinks on my counter. And I, I, I remember this one moment where a guy was filling up a drink on my, in my kitchen and he spilled it over the edge of the glass and he walked away. And I just had this like light bulb and I was like, everybody get the fuck out of my house. Yeah. I don't like you aren't like you are not a part of my identity. I don't even I haven't even put roots down in this fucking town. This this is such a it's a and it's a terrible trap that I think, you know, people you see the reflection of it in people like Britney Spears and like people that have literally like corroded their their childhoods into like no adulthood, like Michael Jackson, even like he was perpetually a child, you know, like like the, the way that the way that they act and the way they govern. I'm not trying to criticize Britney Spears. I, I, I want so much for that woman to like to, to get to, to be well and to be happy and fulfilled in life. But like it, it happens. Even people like Kesha, you know, like that girl was like, she was told to sing drunk in the studio. Sound like you're a drunk party girl. And they pushed her out on the stage in front of ten thousand people, having never sang in front of a fucking crowd before. Like all this systemic shit that we thrust ourselves to to feed this monster, which is like the success in the music business, and we mm. think it's everything. It's actually like just just something else. That being said, That's some deep listen stuff. to Hellraiser <laughs> Part 1 and 2, available on iTunes and Spotify. Hell yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, dude. Uh, 
Love you, boys. So are you, uh, are you directing the video, uh, Tyson? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm sitting here in my room with like storyboards all over the floor, and I'm doing a shot list. I'm like yeah. going for it. Have you, have you, have you done that before? Yeah, man. I direct our, I direct all our videos too. So oh, awesome! My yeah, drawings I... are fucking. Te- my storyboard drawings are like every time I send them off, it's just like, it's like, it's like chat, chat among the crew. It's like we love your <laughs> Like we we just our last video in Ukraine and they were like we love your storyboards like they were just like oh, that's just like little stick stick man I get my wife sometimes to help flesh them out or that's uh, great man use oh, my yeah. shot deck but but yeah how that's, long have you been doing that's that that's reassuring for? oh this was my first one I I I I finally just sort of and basically we couldn't get um uh, my dear friend this guy Jamie Thraves who's a great video uh great music video director who I've worked with a couple times now. We, we, we wrote the concept together and then we, you know, looked at the immigration rule right now with COVID and all of a sudden it was, we can't get Jamie over here. So he was like, you should do it. And I'm like, fuck it. Yeah, yeah let's man. do it. Yeah, yeah the only, did you, you gotta jump right in. <coughs> so you never did any of your bands? No, no, no. We were, did we you were used to like write the, to, did you ever come up with a concept or write out? We, 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 we were heavily contributing into mostly like, the edit like i think we were really like we were really i remember there was this mark, mark webb shot this video for a song we had called move along and we were like sitting in the edit room with him and he was like walking out on us like we were just really particular about like narrative like making sure it made sense instead of it yeah, being yeah. like it's a music video and we can just put the performance in there when we're not telling the story correctly i hate hate music videos with performance yeah, yeah. now I'm yeah, just yeah, so yeah. I'm so over seeing people pretend to play the song on a music video. Like, yeah, yeah. Like it's like it's like playing top of the pops. You're just like you're not playing the song. You're just miming. You're miming. <laughs> yeah, it needs, to, <laughs> it needs to have some kind. At least be grounded in some kind of meaning. Narrative. Me. Yeah, exactly. The message of the song or the message of the video. Something. Yeah. But um, but that the thanks for the encur- I, I'm encouraged the fact that you said your storyboard storyboards are very sort of like raw because mine. My, I'm sort of, you know, doing stick figures and charcoal, and I'm going, yeah. oh man, I don't know if my DP as long is as you know, understand. as long as you know what it means in your head, and, like <laughs> exactly, you vision, and you have a great team around you, great DP, you know, great lighting, it, like it's not like that is where all the work is. You put all the work in before. That's what I mean. That's what I found. Like you put all the work in before on the day. It's like you can almost like sit back and not relax, but you could almost just. It's Watch like, the movie. You, you know, you know what you meant to see, and that's all you. You've got everyone there to help you make that a reality. So it's not as, I mean, it is scary, but it is <coughs> like I realized I were doing everything, but actually just directing it before. And when I was mm. like, one day, I mean, I was kind of pushed into a situation where I either directed this video or it, it weren't going to happen how I wanted it to happen. And mm. um, so I was like, "Fuck it, do it." I know when I did it, I was like, "Oh, that was actually less painful than." trying to get all my ideas over to another director who then kind of dilutes it and sees it their way and so yeah you're, you're, that's you're, encouraging that's encouraging it, man, man. Oh, cheers, it. man. i appreciate it man it's a herculean effort as i'm sure you know but it's like yeah good people around you is everything that's encouraging it, man, man. Oh, cheers, it. man. i appreciate it man it's a herculean effort as i'm sure you know but it's like yeah good people around you is everything to get yeah. this executed yeah yeah, man. Always biting off a little more than we can chew, but that's what the edit's for, right? <laughs> that is it. Mate, that is the story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> We're right on. I know. Well, I appreciate you guys getting on and, uh, you know, thought we should probably wrap it up. Uh, but I really appreciate you guys and Hurricanes out now with Tyson Ritter. I know some people in the chat are like, who is everybody? <laughs> but uh, we got yeah, I'm, I'm, Tyson. I'm, I'm, I'm Skittles um, dad. Yeah, all <laughs> of the bottom uh, right. We got Ollie Sykes from Bring Me the Horizon, bottom left. Uh, Dummy, Dummy's out now with Ollie. Woo! Hurricane's out now with Tyson Ritter. And uh, We're Cheat Codes, Hellraisers Part 2 is out now. And uh, we appreciate you guys, everybody watching. And uh, have Cheer a good Love you guys. Awesome. Hey, it's really insightful, man. Appreciate it, Ollie. Take care. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Good combos, boys. See you, See you later. Peace.